Alright, good morning, good afternoon, greetings. This video will be the very same as many others. The purpose is to um, eliminate any illusions, any um, thoughts or ideas that keep us from reaching what we're calling enlightenment. Um, the point is to uh, have what the Buddha called clear seeing to see the, the real self instead of the dream. The dream self, the dream world. Um, this video is called The Seer, which is the projector, and What's Seen, which is the mirror, um, are the illusion. Duality does not exist. It is not law here. Um, duality is not required for your presence, for your godly nature. Duality is only required when you identify as an ego, as one individual self, instead of the entire function. Um, if I had to summarize what never born, never died means, in the simplest terms, it means all religions are, are telling the same story. No one's taking the time to pay attention that they're all in sync with each other, telling the same story about oneness, 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 but where is the connection failing to be made? It's failing to be made because we're not identifying with this universal self, this universal presence, because we have so many distractions and so many um, illusions within us. But every religion is telling the same story about one being, one presence, which is not moving, which is not changing. And, and this is what never born, never died means. When you identify as God, as the Godhead, as the Almighty, as whatever name you would like to call it, the name truly doesn't matter because it's not what it is. The name is simply to represent or illustrate what you're speaking of, but it's never what it actually is. What you're trying to refer to is the source to your words, is the source to all thought. And that's why you can't put a thought to it. You can't put a word to it. It is the source to what you're trying to define. Um, so essentially, you are every person which has ever existed. You are not male and you are not female. And I'm talking about when you identify as God, as the presence. Presence does not have a gender. Presence does not have a story. Presence does not have a memory. Why? Because nothing is separate. Nothing needs to be remembered in relation to another because nothing is separate. No life has been separate to another. God is every life. God is every memory. God is every happening. God is every place. So there needs to be no memory or mind required to, to be this Godhead. The Godhead is the source to the mind, to the memory, which brings forth the dream world, the, the separate self, in the world which we see on, on our screen of consciousness. But the seer and what's seen are the illusion. You're not person and, and place. You're not body and earth. All these stories of ourselves and our, our outer, the inner and the outer, are, are only severing further and further apart because the stories are getting longer and longer and longer. All stories of, of space and, and us being in, in suspended in some space, some empty space that's an infinite blackness of an abyss. This is a thought. This is an idea. But very few people have met themselves beyond that wall, beyond that idea. Because that's what the infinite abyss of blackness represents, is the mind, is infinity. It goes on forever and ever. And that's where that idea came from. But NASA has hit the wall in space that you cannot penetrate. Likewise, as above, so below, there is a wall within the ocean that you cannot penetrate. And they've hit this wall above and below. This is why I've told people, all your movies are either failed or attempted um, experiments, projects, classified. You would never know. Some of us are just finding out about UFOs being electromagnetic. Um, 
electromagnetic uh, motors and things like that. It's, it's a magnetic field that allows it to travel and float and, and break the, the, the time barrier and all this. But the government has been doing this for centuries. And the reason I think so many people are stuck in the conspiracies is because we want to be ahead of the game. We want to know what's next before it comes. We want to be ahead of the game. We want to awaken, and this is our idea of awakening, is knowing what's coming before it comes. But this is not what an awakening is. Government conspiracies, propaganda, and news stories are just infinite um, things that happen. I'm trying to think of the right word. It's an algorithm. It's an infinite repeating algorithm that, that, that never goes away. Because it's not the law here. What changes is not real and what's real does not change. Likewise, how you have no control, neither do they. Who you're calling they and giving all the power to is only yourself. So as I say, the seer and what's seen are an illusion. The power you project beyond yourself is an illusion. The, the, the light that you're calling the universe is an illusion. The place you're seeing as the world and calling the world is an illusion. Likewise, the projector the one projecting the entire thing is an illusion. You are not body, you are not earth. There is no such thing. There is no such thing as inside and outside. Again, well, you can use these words to illustrate or represent what we're speaking of. But there never has been an inside or outside. They belong to the one presence. Presence is source to all words. Therefore, you are already it. The only thing keeping you in the way from realizing this is not a government, is not a system, is not corruption. It's your very own belief system. And nobody can get this out of your way except for you. Which is where I'm going to start moving into fasting and diets. And again, I know this is an unpopular opinion. I made a Facebook status about this a few days ago. And before I even wrote it, I put unpopular opinion. And as I expected, of course, it got a bunch of negative comments, a bunch of people who didn't understand, a bunch of people who were stating the obvious. If you eat candy every day, you're not going to do this. And if you eat this, you're not going to do that. And so I, I asked some of them, you know, what are you attempting to achieve through your diet, through fasting, through veganism, through whatever it is you're trying to watch? And many say they're trying to reach enlightenment, or it helps them on their spiritual journey. But again, I'm here to remove the illusions, the, the smoke and mirrors. It helps you on your spiritual journey. If you're being honest with yourself, a spiritual journey is about unmasking yourself and discovering who you truly are. So what you consume will never interfere with this journey of who you are. What I hear commonly from the spiritual community is it helps them have visions or better memories or some enchanted thing that they say where it's just, it doesn't sound realistic or like they're being realistic with themselves. So I asked them, is your goal essentially to preserve? You're trying to preserve this body longer, to live longer. Is that the goal? And most of them said yes, but few of them said no. This is not the goal. The goal is not to live longer. And I wrote down the most popular comment that got the most likes. And again, I'm not attacking anybody. I'm not, none of that. I'm just being open-minded and sharing another perspective. But they said, people don't eat clean to live long. If you eat clean long enough, it clears your karma and it doesn't matter when you die. So the thing I wanted to highlight in that is this is a belief system. If you eat clean long enough, it clears your karma. That right there is a limited belief. 
you're telling yourself you are an egoic individual being that has karma, that has something attached to it from past or future. This is memory. This is mind. This is subject to change. Therefore, it is not who you are. It is irrelevant to your truest nature, to the spirit. And again, I get the idea. I get it. But it's a belief system, and that belief system limits you. And then she said, it doesn't matter when you die. But that also implies you have control over this. So again, your, your idea of dieting or eating healthier is preserving you to live longer. But she's saying it doesn't matter when you die. Whether you do this or not, it doesn't matter when you die. Why? Because man plans and God laughs. You can be vegan your entire life. You can eat diet your entire life. You can eat the best you can your whole life. You can still have a heart attack. You can still get hit by a car. You can still have an airplane land on you. You can get killed by an explosion, a fire. Man plans, God laughs. The only reason I go into these topics is because, again, I'm trying to eliminate the illusions, the um, beliefs, what keeps us stuck in limits and boundaries. And any belief system is a boundary. So again, a spiritual journey, a spiritual unveiling has nothing to do with what you consume. If you fast the mind, you don't need to fast the body. And if you're familiar with Ramana Mahashi, that's one of his uh, famous quotes, is all attempts at uh, fasting the body are failed attempts at fasting the mind. See, and this is again, we get in our own way. The very same people that say these things will acknowledge that the mind is everything. But then they'll go right back to what's comfortable, the belief system, what they believe. We don't understand that <clears throat> we are what's getting in our own way. We are limiting ourselves. Whether your belief is in a system, a corrupt system, a government, we all want to be ahead of the game. We all want guidance. We all want direction, which is why so many are into religion. We want guidance. We want rules. We want someone to tell us what's good, what's bad, what we can do, what we can't do, because we're terrified of our truest nature, our truest potential of being God itself, which is why we hide, we distract, we prolong death, which is the doorway. Death is not scary. It will eliminate all your dreams and illusions, which you have persistently existed in day after day. But there comes a point where you begin suffering through this dream more than you're pleasuring. The dream becomes more miserable than it does pleasurable. And this is when you begin seeking your way out of this dream by any means necessary. And this is where the word awakening becomes relevant. You want to awaken from the dream. The catch is, you are what's keeping yourself in the dream. The hardest part is letting go of your belief system because the final piece of that belief system is your own identity. And that is the hardest piece to mourn. That is the last and final piece to mourn of the dream. A lot of people talk about their life flashing before their eyes and losing family in that. But family is not the final piece. Your loved ones are not the final piece. The final piece is yourself. And at the end of it, you will find that you didn't lose your whole family. You didn't, your whole family didn't die. It's the titles of separation that you've known, known the family as that die. Separation dies. The dream dies. So you mourn the loss of, oh my God, they're gone. But wait a minute, who are they? They are me. Not as Tyler, not as body, as presence, as source. They've never gone anywhere. What's left is the illusion. Sister, brother, uncle, dad, mom. These are titles. These are words. There is a source to these words where you all meet as one, where you are home together. The only reason you know of you and me, this and that, is because of this presence. Love is the answer because it loves itself so much it's granted you the experience to know family, to know these things. But it's not meant to be some illusion or some dirty trick. The dream world serves its purpose. But as I stated, some wish to awaken from this dream world. And for those 
this is the path, this is the way. Realizing your own inevitability. Through life or through death, you will be forced to face yourself. And I've mentioned before, this message cannot change. It has not changed, not through COVID, not through anything that has happened. Because again, it goes back to the famous saying, what changes is not real, and what's real does not change. It's irrelevant to ask yourself any questions of duality if you're looking to truly awaken to who you are. And what I mean by duality is two boundary points, beginning and end, past and present. Who was I before or after this is irrelevant because that shows you're still defining yourself and staying within this boundary of limitation between A and B. There is a source to duality. Duality is not law. Duality only exists because of this source, because of this one. And again, this, this one presence has no uh, identity. It's not called human. It's not called God. It has no name. We've tried giving it many names. We've tried giving it many images and at the end, only fight and bicker with ourselves about which one is the correct one. Failing to realize you are, you are all of them. You have been every single one. Every Messiah that has ever lived, every author that's ever written a book, every producer that's ever written a movie, every historian, both good and bad, they've all been you. It's the same presence. When you talk about God and devil, man and... Er, God and devil being the same person or the same energy, the same whatever you want to call it, it's because they've all been you. They've all been the presence. The same presence which is behind my eyes right now is behind your eyes. We identify as different. We are having different experiences, different uh, things. We appear separate because of the mind and memory. And remember... The mind doesn't live in the body, the body lives in the mind. Likewise with the world, the world lives in your mind. And this is why I say, the seer and what's seen are the illusion. You are not separate to what you're calling the world. The world is only mirroring back to you your every belief. So if you want to believe the earth is this shape or that shape, this is what your experience will convert to. It's only mirroring back to you yourself. But this is the dream. This is the illusion. Why? Because it will change. It's inevitable, and you know this already. Through dream, through dreams, sleep is the cousin of death. So you are shown every night how this is bound to appear and disappear right before your eyes. But you are also shown how a whole new experience can take place. And there is no actual off switch. You're always having an experience. You're always producing an experience, whether awake or asleep, eyes open or closed, because you are the experience. You are the, the it itself. You are life itself. There is no off button. But this is why we trick ourselves into believing these things. The universe might give out one day because you've associated yourself with this body which might give out one day. But you failed to realize that your last breath is only your first. The last breath you take in this vessel will be your first breath in another. You've never gone anywhere. This is what the infinity loop represents. You are every person. You've never died and you've never been born. You are the it. When you begin to identify as what is not moving and what is not traveling, there's only one thing that remains here and it's what watches it all. The focal point from behind our eyes we've extracted and put into our camera phones. We've put into to, to, um, camera lenses and, and traffic lenses on, on traffic lights, on street poles. This one singular dot, this one focal point, this eye that we've taken from behind our eyes and is now recording the every, every move, Google Earth, the eye in the sky, it's your own eye. There's only one watcher here. You're not being watched by a government. You're being watched by yourself. It's all you. Artificial intelligence is also you. So again, go back to duality. All questions of duality for yourself are irrelevant. Am I an artificial intelligent being or am I an organic being produced by a god? 
they're one and the same. And that's the grand, the grand trick. You're awakening to yourself what we call the singularity. Singularity means one. So the day will come that we realize we have just produced in, uh, what we're calling a human being. But in all the books we read, we've talked about God producing humans. God created humans. But the day will come where we bite our own tail. tail. We become the snake that devours itself. All our questions will be answered by no one but ourselves. Who are the aliens? The aliens are you. You are the unknown to yourself. You do not recognize yourself. We hide behind the veil of being human. But again, the time will come when we will reproduce, recreate what we call a human. And we will have to realize, we will be forced to realize our inevitability. That you have never been human. And if you have never been human, if a human does not exist, then likewise what you're calling artificial life and what you're calling a machine does not exist either. There is only one presence. The same experience we have here is no different than what we're calling a machine. Your wires are intelligently hidden. The veins, the electrical signals from the brain to the rest of the body, electrical signals, it's a computer. You are essentially what you're calling a machine. But again, you're more than that. You're not just a machine. You're not just human. Because again, these words don't exist. These words won't exist a thousand years from now. But the presence which is here now is timeless. It has no expiration date. It has no entrance. It's not traveling. It's not moving. Nothing is dying here. When we see somebody dying, we assume they have left because the eyes are closed. They obviously, they're no longer moving. They're no longer able to move. But again, the only thing that has left you is the title of that person, the memory of that person, and the visual, the body, the person. But again, person is the illusion. Separation is the illusion. You already know that if you fall in love with the dream world, with what is bound to change, then it is inevitable everything is going to change to and eventually demise, to destruct. But what does the ocean show you? It's a magnificent har harmony. It's in perfect sync. It's in perfect balance. Just as you think something is ending, it's only beginning. Your loved ones have never left you. Your loved ones have never left you. They are you. And by knowing yourself, you know your loved ones. You are home. You're at that immovable place, if you want to call it that in which everything meets as one. You can never be fooled again by life and death because you are at that place which is life. Again, even when you dream at night, you produce an experience because you are that experience, you are that presence which is not moving. Without you, your truest being, without what you're calling spirit, there is no experience. There is no word to define inside from outside body and earth you come first as spirit as god as presence as source then all the other words can come forth which become real through the mind but real is only the spirit what does not change what does not move that is the only reality there is Thank you, Keanu. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. Our, our, our nature is so simple. This is why they warn us of growing up, of being an adult. Because adults forget 
how simple the answer is. We become so complex. And this is why the spiritual community, I won't say is a big sham, but it's very deceiving. Because the majority of people are not willing to be honest enough. They're fooling themselves. Again, I'm not picking on anybody. I want to see people push themselves to their limitlessness. It's the most terrifying thing we can do. But we're always looking to fall back on a belief system, on a system that guides us, on something that instructs us, because we don't believe we are the it, we are the enough. This is why we're always looking toward what's coming next. What's the, we always wanna be ahead of the government conspiracy. We always wanna be ahead of aliens visiting. We're always pointing with our heads to the sky, looking for the next life. What's wrong with this life? What's wrong with this intelligence? This is enough. But we await something to come down from the sky and visit us to tell us who we are. When the truth of the matter is, even if that day came, majority of the people would simply reject the answer that was given if it wasn't in alignment with your belief system. If it was too hard to accept, because letting go is the final chapter, is the hardest part. It's the final chapter of closing the book on the dream. You are the only one that, that, that can awaken you because you are the only one believing in what you believe in, no matter what the belief is. The mind is everything. You are the all-pervading, powerful one. You are the Neo to your experience. Awaken. There is nobody that's stopping you. And again, I get the whole you know, wanting to eat healthy and all that, I'm not knocking any of that. What I am saying is if you're eating healthy to produce a certain effect, to produce something which is going to happen, which is going to trigger you to open the third eye or some miraculous, you know, miracle, however you want to word it and decorate it. That's what the spiritual community does. They decorate everything. If I eat this or don't drink fluoride, I'm going to open my third eye and then have this beautiful experience of heaven and I'm going to feel bliss and I'm going to feel better and I'm going to just feel so radiant. But no, this is a failed attempt at fasting the true source, the mind. If you fast the mind, you don't need to fast the body. If you just like eating healthy, that's fine. Have at it. Like I said, I'm not telling anybody what to do, but don't do it expecting a certain outcome, a spiritual outcome. This will never happen for you. And the day may come where you convince yourself it's happening. And I'm not saying eating healthy doesn't make you feel good, make you have more energy. But it's not going to produce the spiritual outcome you're awaiting. That it moment. The spiritual process has nothing to do with that. It's about you taking this focal point that I talk about and turning that lens in on itself you have all these questions, all these things you seek. So what this does is, is it takes the focal point through introspection and it turns that camera lens in on the questioner. Yes, you have thousands of questions, but who's the questioner asking these questions? Who's speaking for me as this focal point? If I can acknowledge that all my words are made up and there is a source to my words. Who is asking all these questions? There is obviously a separate entity which is separate from the source. You don't need a connection to it. You simply need introspection. Turn the lens on itself and confront this questioner. And I don't mean confront it as in it's a negative thing, but confront it as in make it your focus. Forget about government conspiracies. There will always be a news story about what they're doing next. They are you. What they are there to do is serve as Mr. Smith. They represent the power, what's wrong with the world and everything in it. They are the mirror which we blame. But they are only your subconscious. They have all the power and it's not fair. But what is your subconscious? It's what you are unaware of. You are playing two identities the entire time. This is why Fight Club is one of my favorite movies. 
You're playing out two roles, two characters, two identities. You are the good and the bad. You are the weak and the powerful. You are the above and the below, the, the rich and the poor, the top and the bottom. Every character and every role has only been assigned by you. When you truly awaken, this becomes a huge laugh. One, because you understand your truest nature can never be harmed. And two, you don't need control in the sense of the separate self, the ego, because what you're fighting against to control is already yourself. You've been fighting yourself the whole time. The you, which is separate to source, which is the ego, the mind body, the Tyler, the name, has no control. Why? Because your idea of control was conceived out of the ego itself. Control to the ego is, I'm thirsty, I'm going to go get a drink. I want something, I'm going to go get it. I want to write something on a piece of paper, I'm going to do that. That's control to the ego. It's conceived out of ego. That's our sense of control. But again, it goes back to man plans and God laughs. What you truly are is actually in control, but it doesn't need to grip a hold of anyone or control it because it is already driving it. There is a natural intelligence here. It's in the beach. If you see how when, when sand is, is washed or there's holes in the sand, the water washes up new sand and fills those holes. The old shells get washed away, new shells get brought forth. It's a never ending factor. That same force which is in the ocean and the waters is in the air and the winds, is in the trees and the grass, is in your blood, is in your DNA, is in your stomach digesting your food. It's all one natural motion. You don't need to take control of it because you are in control. You are the control itself. You are the motion. But understand this, you are not moving. You are the motion, but you are not moving. You never have gone anywhere. You are the present which is immovable, which is all-pervading, it's everywhere. Because there is no place separate to presence. Again, wherever you are, the experience is, because your presence is the entire experience. When your eyes shut and you fall asleep, you bring forth a whole new experience. Likewise, when you die, the body dies, and you, these eyes shut for the final time, you will not die you will bring forth a whole new experience because you are all of them. You are every person. You are every being. You are not male and you are not female. Why? Because the presence is all of them. And this is where, again, we're starting to move into the time where we're awakening to the fact through this new generation, and I know a lot of people don't like it, they're rejecting it because it's unfamiliar, it's uncomfortable, but the reason it's uncomfortable is it's unmasking us as what we've identified for centuries. We've identified as human beings for centuries, and the only way you can be a human being is by being a male or female. This image is a male or a female. It is a human, right? And I understand that we, you know, there are different DNA sequences and all that. Not, not arguing that. What I'm speaking for is the God, the energy, whatever we want to call it, that word. When you identify as that energy, as that presence, you have no gender in that direct immediate moment. You are identifying as a spirit, as something which is immovable, which has no body, which has no shape, which has no trace, yet is again, all pervading everywhere. Therefore, you have no gender, male, female, this, that. Why? Because this and that belong to the separate entity which begins speaking the separate entity which is separate from the spirit, from source. Only the ego needs a story. Only the ego needs an identity. So that's why the ego must have this or that. There has to be two. There has to be this or that. There, there can't be non-binary. These things offend us because they're, they're disturbing our dream of being human. But as I said, the time will come where we devour ourselves as the Ouroboros, the snake devouring its own tail. Well, we have to realize we are not human and never have been. This is why NASA and these governments have never found the human origin. There is no original man. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The question is wrong. Because when you identify a spirit and source, there is no first, there is no beginning or end. There is no sequential order to infinity. Look for the starting point to infinity and you'll never find it. You'll chase an abyss 
You'll chase infinity into it, an abyss of madness and chaos because chaos is your true nature. You'll never find it. You'll drive yourself mad looking for the starting point to infinity. So to ask who came first, the chicken or the egg, the black, the white, the this, the that, there is no first. There is no sequential order to infinity, to your truest being, to spirit, to nature. There's none. So again, I understand why different cultures want to have God in their image. They want to, you know, look at the Chinese God. It mirrors their culture. Look at the African God. It mirrors their culture. Look at the Guatemalan, Mexican God. It mirrors their, their culture. We all want that godly image, that one all-powerful to be us, to be our culture, to be who we are. Yet we're all fighting that ours is the right one. No, ours is the right one. You're all of them. They're all the same being. Cultures, tribes, and flags, and borderlines are illusions. Again, these are separations. There is no separation in, infin in infinity. Infinity is chaos. You have no borderline. You have no separation. There is no culture. There is no tribe. There is no this or that. And again, I'm not knocking it. I understand why we have cultures, tribes, and different cultures and, and things that, that we do. I understand. But if you're talking from a spiritual level, as God, as the Godhead, it's all of them. It is every culture. It is every tribe. It is that place that we're calling home. It is that final place, if you want to call it a place, because it's not a place. But it is that final place where we all meet as one and recognize ourselves for the first time. These were not God's people. These were my people. It doesn't matter the color. It doesn't matter the tribe, the culture, where they're from. When you are looking at the world from the Godhead, there is no longer, look at these people. No, these are my people. This is my creation. This is my world. I created this. And again, it's not from a narcissistic, evil, egoic point of view of, I created this, I did all of it. No, it's from an understanding, loving, humbling, all-knowing moment where in a moment you just understand, you know everything, you know it all. You understand the beautiful, harmonious way of nature and how everything has been perfectly designed by you, the Godhead. To go against nature is to go against ourselves. But that's the thing. Humans always think they can correct what already is perfect. We think we can do it better. We think we're more intelligent than that intelligence, or whatever that intelligence is. So we go against it, but we're only directly going against ourselves and our own intelligence. Us fighting to take control or to control or to perfect this only puts us at war with ourselves, only separates us further from our truest nature of who we are. The truth of it is, is you can never be fulfilled here as long as you're an ego. On this 3D world, you will never be fulfilled here as long as you identify as an ego. Because think about it. What is success as an ego? Success has been sold to you as having more money in the bank than you know what to do with. Success is having more than enough. More rooms than you know what to do with. More cars than you can even drive at once. This is success, but you cannot be fulfilled by this. You can acquire all the materials. You can buy all the cars. You can buy all the houses. It will never fulfill your spirit. Because your spirit is looking for something so much more. And what it's looking for is that recognition. That's the final chapter. That is what will fulfill you. That is what you are looking for. Your soul searching for. But since we identify as an ego, naturally so, we're trying to fulfill what we think to be ourselves as the ego. We're not aware we're doing this. But we naturally attach and identify as the ego we're naturally going to try and serve and, and increase the joy of this ego, of what we think to be ourselves. But this is the false self. 
This is the false sense of self. And that's why you cannot fulfill it. More will never be enough. More will only deplete your spirit more. But of course, I can't tell you this. I can't show you this. You have to acquire all that you think will fulfill you. Only then will you realize or see how you feel after. It's like Jim Carrey says, I, I wish everyone could get everything they ever wanted so that they could see that it wasn't what they wanted. There's something more there that the eye cannot see. There's something more that we're all looking for. There's something more and deeper that we know deep down, yet can't put words to. And it goes back to the beginning of this video. Why can't you put words to it? Because you are the it you're trying to define. What you're trying to define is the source to your very words. It's like a cat chasing its own tail. You're trying to define it, but in de defining it, you are severing that connection, that, that identity to it. You don't need to define it because you are it. You don't need to meditate because you are it. Meditation is your presence, is your being. And this is why I, I, I talk about the spiritual community so much. Because a lot of these spiritual practices are not actual practices. The spiritual community has severely been commercialized. And this has gone back before, you know, the spiritual community and these trending topics online and all that. This has gone back to the Buddha. The Buddha was taken and commercialized. That The image that you see of Buddha sitting in a lotus position is commercialized Buddha. That is not Buddha. That is commercialized Buddha. The image that you see of Jesus raising the hand or, or talking to his apostles, that's commercialized Jesus. Whatever name you'd like to call him, Yeshua. That is commercialized Yeshua. That is commercialized Buddha. Why is it commercialized? Because it's selling you something which you don't already have. What Buddha, what the Jesus, what all of these prophets were talking about is forget all the storytelling. Look directly into yourself and realize I am you. I am not a messiah, I am the presence which is, which is you. They brought people power, they brought people hope, because they were bringing the power to the people within themselves. Again, if you fast the mind, you don't need to fast the body. The mind is everything. The mind will give you clear seeing. If you want a true spiritual experience, look within the mind. The mind is everything. There is nowhere you can go beyond yourself. Uh, 15-20 minutes. Okay, I'm waiting. Yeah, I'll go. Yours? Hmm. Yeah, the Buddha didn't want people coming back to him. He wanted people to, to face what he called total death. The Buddha called his teaching total death. And he didn't try and sugarcoat it or decorate it to be beautiful as the spiritual community does. His philosophy was called total death. And if you wanted to learn how to be the Buddha, you had to face his philosophy of total death. Because death is the doorway. And death is simply the end to the dream. The end to separation. And if you face total death, which means totally die, separation abolishes. No longer do you see teacher and student. I am you. No longer do you see guru and pupil. I am you. I get it now. You are not the Buddha, and I am not Tyler. Tyler is Buddha. Buddha is Tyler. There is not two of us. There is not two people. There is one presence. I am that I am. God is not one of you. He's all of you. She's all of you. It is all of you. It's all one thing, one presence. And presence can become any identity, any word, any gender, anything it wants to become. Why? Because the mind is everything. Our greatest fear is our own power. We're always looking to the news, 
the government stories, the classified government documents, things that will tell us something about ourselves. We're always looking for a guideline or an instruction or something to bounce ourselves off of in relation to another. But when you abolish duality, all the power that you are seeking out is returned back to the source, which is you, the presence. And again, it's not like a narcissistic power of I have all the power. It is a peace brought to you because no longer do you seek or project this power into anything or anywhere. No longer are you trying to get ahead of the government conspiracy or the stories or the what's next. Your attention doesn't need to be diverted to anywhere but the happening. You finally can be and just live instead of chasing your own tail through the rabbit hole which again the rabbit hole serves its purpose that's what awakened you to the dream world or to the fact that something is not right with the world that's what introduced you to the idea of awakening the rabbit hole serves its purpose but many of us stay stuck stay immersed in the rabbit hole because hard letting go is simply the hardest part. Letting go is the same as death, is the same as the end. There's a, a quote from Jiddu Krishnamurti that says, we don't fear the unknown, we fear the known coming to an end. And that, that is the hardest part, letting go. But that's where you lose yourself to find yourself. You lose yourself as one little string, one little arm, when you're the entire head. You mourn yourself only for a little, only to, to marvel in the greatest laugh you've ever had with yourself. It begins as maybe dark and sinister. But in the end, you're in heaven, you're in bliss, because at last you understand. Of course, death is dark and gloomy at first, but you have to take it serious, you have to die, you have to mourn in order to see what remains. Only then can you know. Letting go is the hardest part. That is spirituality. The phoenix devouring itself the snake devouring itself. This is spirituality. You see how the snake loops around back to itself? Because what the spiritual community is doing is it's only having one circle. The snake is only going in a circle, a repetitive circle with itself. Because these spiritual practices are keeping you coming back. You do the practice, you loop around, and you come right back again. Do the practice, Come right back around. Practice. Come right back around. And again, so I'll go back to what I said about the food too. I'm not knocking people who want to sit in a field by the water and they enjoy the sounds of nature for hours. That's totally beautiful. But to the people in the spiritual community that think sitting by the grass and the water, by nature and all this is meditation and this is going to bring you a spiritual journey or a spiritual enlightenment or something spiritual it will not help you spiritual practices will not help you on your journey to self-discovery they will only get in the way and they will only reinforce the very ego you're seeking to be rid of because you are now in a, in a repetitive cycle a loop with yourself that I cannot be God connect to God or even have a spiritual experience until I do this to produce that outcome why produce the outcome when you can be it why connect to it when you are it the practice only severs you from walking breathing and living it And likewise, the philosophy, the words, the beliefs only keep you from walking, breathing, and living it. 
which is why, honestly, I haven't been motivated to do these videos very often. If people who are familiar with my page know, I used to do videos every week, every other day, and now I'm doing them once every two, three months because I'm not very motivated. But every now and then I see beautiful comments on there, you know, where people are asking me to come back or just to do another video or they say something beautiful about how I've helped them and it inspires me just to jump on here and, and share a little more. But I, honestly, at, at the end of the day, all my videos, everything I say, whether it's taken harsh or negatively or, you know, it's only meant to help. It's only for the greater good. I don't mean any harm to anybody. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm only trying to help people. I'm only trying to push people to their limitlessness. I want people not to believe in themselves, but to be the self. Don't, don't need to, to check what Buddha said. You are the Buddha. You don't need to look in the Bible as to what Jesus said. You are the Jesus. You are the Messiah. You don't need to come to YouTube for spiritual enlightenment or videos. You are it. There is no frequency or anything that will tune you in better to being God other than yourself. The frequency within you, through introspection, the mind, turn the mind on itself, and you'll discover. The seer and what's seen are one and the same thing. The world and the body are an illusion. There is no spoon. That's what this means. There is no spoon bending. There is no spoon changing. It is your own mind. It is your own belief. There is no world changing. The world doesn't instantly become flat, round, square. No. This, you have all these communities talking about what the world is and what it is and where it is and all this. It's not the world changing. It is only yourself. There is no spoon, there is no world. It is only your mind. And that's why I like referring to the, the screen to our consciousness as a mirror. This is the body, and that's not the earth, that's a mirror. It's mirroring back to you your mind, yourself, your most sacred beliefs. And all of those beliefs are safeguarding who you 